Hello, neighbor. As you know, we each have roughly 7 billion neighbors on this same planet. The roughly 2 billion Christians know very little about Hinduism. And the roughly 1 billion Hindus in the world know very little about Christianity. The purpose of this video is to summarize and to explain the main concepts of Christianity without boring you to tears with too many details. So if you have questions during this presentation, just give me a call. The most important person in this video is you. Only you can compare what you know about Hinduism to what is presented about Christianity. So let's start at the beginning. Within eternity, before anything else existed, a spirit we call Almighty God existed. In the eternal darkness before creation, Almighty God divided himself into three persons. We identify these persons as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The person of the Holy Spirit divides himself into seven different manifestations. Hello? Hello? Who was it that created Almighty God? And how many gods are there? One, three, or nine gods? The answer to your question is that there is just one God that chooses to reveal himself to mankind in several different manifestations. Almighty God is one God that has no beginning and no end. And what we know and understand is that humans do not have the ability to know and understand how Almighty God can exist without a beginning. It's just like if you ask an ant or a bee to explain how cell phones work, they would not have the mental ability to understand and explain that science. And no human being has the mental ability to understand and explain how Almighty God exists. It is a spiritual truth that is accepted by faith. We can each see the universe around us, and it just does not take any faith to see it. But how the universe came into being from non-existence cannot be explained by any science. Scientific theories about the origin of the universe always begin in the faith that something began to exist out of nothingness. And just as mankind cannot understand and explain scientifically how the universe came into existence from nothingness, no human can understand and explain how Almighty God exists. We have faith that he exists, and then we add to our faith the knowledge that comes from our relationship and our friendship with Almighty God. It is a truth that is accepted by faith. At some point in eternity, Almighty God manifested as the Son, spoke these words, Light be. And instantly he created the universe of over 50 billion galaxies, and each galaxy with over a billion stars. And as I said earlier, this is just a summary of events. Within his creation is his home, and we call that place heaven. It could be a planet, but we just do not know what it is. In heaven, he created many other spirit beings to live with him. Each one is vastly different from the other. Most of these we call angels, but he also created other spirit beings we call cherubim and seraphim. During the times of creation, Almighty God created the earth with all the plants and animals. And on the earth, he created a beautiful garden. He then created a human spirit person that was a lot like Almighty God. The human spirit is not male or female, but neuter like the angels. Then God took dirt and created a body for that spirit and breathed the human spirit into the body, making the first man. He then put the first human to sleep and took a rib from that man and made a woman. Almighty God would visit his garden in the evenings and walk and talk with the first two humans. Meanwhile, in heaven, one of Almighty God's created beings, a very special cherub named Lucifer, decided that he wanted all of what Almighty God had created. He began to try to be a God higher than Almighty God. Eventually, one-third of all the angels in heaven rebelled against God and joined that cherub named Lucifer. Back in the garden, God had created two special trees. If you ate from the fruit of one tree, you received eternal life, and you could never die. The fruit from the other tree gave the knowledge of right and wrong. God told the first humans, do not eat from the tree of knowledge of right and wrong. The day that you do it, you will die. 
The cherub Lucifer came to the garden and made himself look like a snake. As a snake, he told the woman that she could be like God, knowing right from wrong. If she ate from the tree of knowledge of right and wrong, or as it is written in the scriptures, if she ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The woman ate the fruit and gave to the man the fruit so that he also ate the knowledge of right and wrong. When God came to walk with them that evening, he knew what they had done. And he cursed them and also Lucifer. And God told them that the offspring of the woman would defeat Lucifer, whom is now called Satan, and he's called the dragon. The human couple were sent out of the garden that same day so that they could not eat of the tree of eternal life. And that was the last day they ever walked with God. Since we are created as spirits and live in a body, life and death are really not relative to the days your body has on earth. Life is relative to your relationship with Almighty God. The two humans experienced spiritual death that same day. In other words, death is a separation between God and man. When any person comes to the knowledge of right and wrong, they die spiritually and have an eternal separation from God. The human spirits continued to live in their own bodies and reproduced children for many years until their bodies died. At their death, the angels came and took the human spirits to a special place to wait for the time of judgment by Almighty God. Since the human spirits knew right and wrong, they will be judged for their right and wrong actions. The first humans disobeyed the words of the true God and were obedient to the words of the false God, and this caused the first spiritual death. God will judge us for disobeying what we know to be right and doing what we know to be wrong, and our own actions will cause our second spiritual death, which is the eternal separation from Almighty God in the lake of fire. Hello? Hello? Does God throw babies into the lake of fire? No. God is a good God. Children and people whom have not reached the knowledge of right and wrong are not punished. Almighty God created the lake of fire to punish Lucifer, whom is now called Satan, and his angels, whom obey Satan. Almighty God's plan from the beginning was to give all of the human race eternal life and fellowship with him. Mankind was given a free will and the ability to choose to do right or wrong. Evil people that serve Satan instead of God are first judged and then cast into the lake of fire. But it is because they have rejected God and have knowingly done evil acts. But at the same time that Almighty God was cursing mankind to death for their sin, he was blessing them with his plan to remove all sin and give them eternal life with him. Let me take a moment to explain God's plan with the symbols of spiritual beings. Lucifer the cherub's plan was to take over heaven and raise his throne above the throne of Almighty God. He first deceived one-third of the angels in heaven to follow him and to serve him as a god. Then he deceived mankind during the time of their innocence. And mankind rebelled against God also. When a man's body dies, the man's spirit is taken by the angels to a holding place away from God's presence. That place is called death, hell, and Hades. But Satan himself had just walked into a trap set by Almighty God. A trap that was too simple for Satan to understand or believe. Satan's war against Almighty God continued for thousands of years and billions of mankind had passed into death. But during these thousands of years, Almighty God spoke to mankind over and over through his prophets and told mankind of their future and told mankind about the total defeat of Satan and the resurrection of everyone that died to the joy of their salvation. One day all of mankind will be resurrected after the first death and restart their lives on earth. The simple plan that Satan could not understand was a sacrifice because of the greatness of the love of God for the humans of this world. Mankind is a created spirit that lives in a body made from dirt because of the union between a man and a woman. But Almighty God visited a virgin woman, made her pregnant, and he placed the spirit of the Son of God into the human body. The angels called him Emmanuel, which means God with us, and Jesus, which means Savior. He is not a human spirit in a man's body. He's the spirit of Almighty God in a human body. Satan still did not know what Almighty God had planned. 
During the time that there was only one sin, Adam rebelled against God and brought the curse of death to all of mankind. But now on earth, Satan has a new opponent that cannot be defeated, the Spirit of Almighty God in a human body. Satan continued his plan in trying to kill all of mankind. And he also made many unsuccessful attempts to kill the man-god named Jesus. Finally, in God's perfect time, he allowed Jesus to be arrested and beaten and suffer many injustices. And then God allowed his only begotten son, Jesus, to be crucified by the Roman soldiers on a wooden cross until he died. This was the sacrifice that totally defeated Satan. Satan had caused the murder of a person whom had not rebelled against Almighty God and was not under the same curse of death as mankind. The victories that Satan had enjoyed against mankind for thousands of years had all just been lost. Jesus was illegally murdered and his body stayed in the grave three days and then Almighty God resurrected Jesus from the dead. When Satan caused the murder of Jesus, the curse of God against Satan came into effect. Satan lost everything, all authority and power. And all authority in heaven and earth was given to Jesus. Jesus was given authority to raise the dead and judge all of humanity and judge Satan and all of his angels. Jesus made a pledge to all of mankind. If anyone would believe that Jesus defeated Satan and was raised from the dead, if they were willing to turn away from doing evil and ask God to forgive them for their sin, then Jesus would forgive all of their sin and they would not be held accountable for any sin at the judgment. They would be raised from the dead and given a new body and spend the rest of eternity in a joy-filled relationship with God. In a quick summary, this arrogant created being, the cherub Lucifer, whom is also called Satan, was responsible for the crime of murdering an innocent man that was not under the curse of death. Jesus was not under the curse of death because he is not a human spirit in a human body. He is God in the spirit and man in the body. But by one man, the first man, Adam, brought death to every other human. And every human must pass through this death before they can be resurrected from the dead. As mankind lives and makes decisions, he also rebels and sins against Almighty God. And during this resurrection of the dead, Man is given a new body before they are judged for all their sins. We will all be judged by the Son of Man, and that person is the Spirit of God in the human body of a resurrected man, Jesus. However, the good news is that when Satan shed the innocent blood of Jesus, Almighty God received that innocent blood as payment for all of mankind's sins. However, for a man's sins to be forgiven, that man must believe in what Jesus did on the cross for him by his innocent blood. A man must believe it so strongly that he turns away from his sin and is baptized. The instructions the Lord Jesus Christ gave us is that we should pray that we are able to stand before the Son of Man. My friend, no one is able to stand before the Son of Man unless he is washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are none righteous, no, not one, we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Let us pray now together and ask Almighty God to forgive our sin and wash us in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just follow after me in prayer, but pray with your own faith and your own sincerity. Father God, that's right, just pray in faith after me. Father God, I ask you now to forgive all of my sins and wash me in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and make me holy unto you. Baptize me now in the Holy Spirit and give me more power to resist temptations. I acknowledge that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for my sin and is soon to return. I forgive all of those people that I have resented or hated, and I receive from you the free gift of salvation. I dedicate my life and commit my spirit to you. I ask you now to keep me strong in the time of testing and help me to stand before the Son of Man. 
I receive that as done. Amen. Thank you for praying with me, child of God. 